Hello everyone. So next we'll talk about a paper called Deep Learning Approach to Antibiotic Discovery. This is a paper published in Cell in 2020 by a group of IMIT researchers. So antibiotic discovery is very essential in modern medicine. However, uh, continuous efficacy of existing antibiotic is very uncertain due to the antibiotic resistance. And there's also a lack of economic incentive for new antibiotic to be developed. Because unlike medication for chronic disease, you have, like drugs for diabetes, you have to take every day. Antibiotics uh, has a very short-term treatment course, maybe like a week. And that makes developing this type of drugs economically speaking, not very attractive because of the usage is short. Also discovering new antibiotic is becoming more and more difficult. So new approach for antibiotic discoveries are needed. And this is a paper to show us how to use deep learning to do that. Here's the pipeline of their approach. They first gather some training data that's uh, collected from wet lab test. Then you be, they build an ensemble of graph neural network models. Then they use these models to score um, known drug molecules from drug repurposing hub to find uh, the most promising antibiotic candidates. They identify 99 of those candidates. Then they went through a further toxicity prediction to find the ones that are most promising, this uh, single molecule called the uh, halosine. And then they conduct a further animal study comparing halosine with uh, existing antibiotic treatment and shown uh, performance uh, encouraging performance of this new antibiotic candidates. So next, let's look at those different steps in details. So data collection steps, they take uh, 1,760 molecules from this database that's FDA approved drugs, so that they're, they're at least safe. And they also combine that with another 800 molecules from natural products. And they use this 2,335 compounds and went through a set of screening against E. coli uh, bacteria and trying to see how well they, those molecules are in terms of, uh, kind of uh, control the growth of those bacteria, E. coli. And you can see this clearly is separated into two groups. The blue ones have probably uh, not very uh, much effects to uh, control the growth of the bacteria. And the red ones are considered heat, so they're potential candidates for as a uh, antibiotic. And this is just building a training data set so they can uh, train a machine learning classifier and then use the classifier to score other molecules. Right? This is the training data set to build that model. And the model they're using is this graph neural network model called message passing neural network. And comparing to the standard message passing neural network, in this particular variant, they uh, build they want to learn a representation for the edges instead of just for nodes and as traditional graph neural network focus on and this this variant they focus on edges they want to learn the edge embedding then from the edge embedding they can kind of derive node embedding and then graph embedding and in terms of node and edge features there are a different set of features on the nodes include different atom types and then the number of bonds and so on and this is kind of dimensionality of each uh, type of features. And then similarly for edges, they have bond type, whether it's on the ring or not, right? There's a, a number of features on the edges as well. For the edge embedding update, uh, they're taking this kind of a message passing strategy that's a commonly used in graph neural network. And each message that between a vertex V and W is summation of all the um, message coming from uh, node I mean, this node XV and node XK, and so if they have this, and also this edge feature HKV, and they sum over all those neighbors, and except for W itself, right? Uh, and so then they construct this update message. Then the, the edge embeddings uh, for the next iteration will be uh, some neural network function over the old embedding, and plus this new message, and this. Particular paper, they use ReLU plus a linear combination of this to embed it. And yeah, so that's the edge embedding. Then from there, they can further define the message node and then to get the node embedding. And finally, once you have the node embedding on each uh, vertices, then you can sum them up. That gives us the graph embedding. 
and this operation is called read all operation. And finally, they can use this H uh, embedding, which corresponding to the entire graph, and use that as a feature vector to build a classifier. For example, predicting whether the molecule will be a heat or not as an antibiotic candidate. Uh, before they build this classifier, they also combine the graph embedding together with some domain-specific features and use that together as a feature vector to build this classifier. And they use cross-validation, build an ensemble of 20 models for, to make the final prediction. And here's the performance that uh, final deep learning model, and you can see the area under the ROC curve is very high, close to 0.9, and then they use that to score all those molecules uh, and in the repurposing database and find this nine, top 99 candidates that are selected for lab validation. And in the lab validation, they find this particular molecule, uh, halosine, and compare them to a known antibiotic treatment and a controlled no treatment, and you can see that there's a, a over times and there is a very clear benefit of this uh, blue dots or curves and comparing to the red and, and the green ones. And so in summary, uh, this is paper talk about a deep learning model, uh, predictive uh, to train a predictive model for antibiotics uh, structure. And they also uh, identified this particular molecule called halosine that can be used uh, potentially as a uh, candidate for new antibiotics. Thank you.